Welcome to Keep Heading East. I'm Murray from the YSC Cookery School. If you're joining us again, then welcome back. If you're joining this series for the first time, you've joined us in Canada, the 28th stop on our whistle stop tour of global feasting. You can check out the main introduction to this series by clicking on the on-screen link in the cards, or follow the link in the description below for our free PDF cookbook with all the dishes that we'll be cooking in this series, or if you prefer a printed version, there's one available as well. Now Canada is a huge country in the northern part of North America. Its 10 provinces and three territories extend right from the Atlantic all the way to the Pacific and up to the Arctic, covering just under 10 million square kilometers. Although due to the climate and the terrain, a lot of it's uninhabited. It's the world's second largest country by total area and its southern and western border with the United States stretches just under 9,000 kilometers, making it the world's longest by national land border. So the population of only 37 million, in theory each Canadian has a massive 3.7 square kilometers each. Though in reality the three northern territories, the Northwest Territories, Nunavut and the Yukon account for around 40% of the country and have a population of just over 100,000 inhabitants. So the majority of Canadians are kind of spread along that southern border. The three largest metropolitan areas being Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver. Now Canadian cuisine also varies wildly depending on the regions and that's because Canadian cuisine has evolved from the English, the Scottish and the French with the English speaking parts of Canada closely related to British cuisine, while the traditional cuisine of French Canada has evolved from the French and the winter provisions of fur traders. Now there are several iconic food dishes to come out of Canada, with the most well known being things like maple syrup, poutine, nanimo bars, smoked salmon and, and butter tarts. Now poutine is a French fried dish, arguably Canada's national and most defining dish. Personally, I'm not really convinced, but apparently it's one of the best things to come out of the French impact on, on Canada. Poutine's basically meat-based gravy and curds, cheese curds, on top of a bowl of fries. And it's so popular in the country that even fast food chains like McDonald's serve them as well. As for its origins, um, a number of towns in Quebec claim to have invented it back around the 1950s. I'll leave a short clip in the end cards that takes you inside La Bonquise in Montreal. It's a restaurant famous for its poutine and you can decide for yourself. Now another huge part of Canada's food history comes from the cod fishing industry in Newfoundland. For centuries there has been an abundance of cod in the waters surrounding Newfoundland and it's, a, and it's been a thriving industry. The cod catch peaked in 1968 at 810,000 tonnes, approximately three times more than the maximum yearly catch that had been achieved before the super trawlers. So to put that in perspective, approximately 8 million tonnes of cod were caught between 1650 and 1750, which was a period encompassing about 25 to 40 cod generations. And the new factory trawlers took the same amount in 15 years. But it took until the early 1990s for the industry to finally collapse entirely from overfishing and arguably greed, lack of foresight and poor local administration. By 1993, six cod populations had completely collapsed, forcing the belated halt on fishing. After a 10 year pause on fishing, the cod had still not returned and the waters appeared to be kind of dominated by crab and shrimp rather than fish. However, by 2011 it became apparent that the fisheries were returning to their original abundance. It was just taking a bit longer than they'd anticipated. If you'd like a further insight into the industry, and there's a really good video on that retrospectively looks at the cod fishing industry and the tragic loss of the Canadian cod stocks. I'll leave the link in the end cards. Now for this week's entry into the Keep Heading East cookbook, I wanted to focus on a part of the fish that's really often overlooked, except in Newfoundland. Um, where they appreciate a little tongue-in-cheek. So while the rest of the world are eating the fillet meat from the cod, Newfoundlanders are making the most of digging out these two cuts, the cheeks and, and the tongue, from the leftover fish heads, and they really are superb. Fish cheeks are like the equivalent of, of leg meat. You know, it's tastier um, than the fillet is. It's got a bit more texture, but it's often considered a lesser cut. A halibut cheek, for example, sometimes can be the same size as a pig's cheek. Um, and it's definitely one to pick up if you ever see one on the fish counter. The tongue and cheek meat has a slightly stronger flavour and classically it's, um, it's fried in bacon lardons or, or scrunchions as they're known in Canada. 
Now our recipe is pretty close to the way that you'd have it served in Canada, although maybe a little bit more refined, with a little bit more finesse. So it's definitely one worth trying. So that's it for this stop on our Keep Heading East tour of global cuisine. I hope you've enjoyed it. Links are on screen now for the videos I mentioned earlier if you'd like to see a little more from the region. And remember, for our subscribers, there's a fantastic cookbook to accompany this series. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe and grab yourself a free PDF copy of our cookbook. Or if you prefer a hard copy, the links are there as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon.